Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Eddie's Asylum. This is the series where Eddie Matthews becomes an angry boy and leads his team of warriors to hopefully someday become an all 99 overall team in MLB The Show. That's right, Eddie's Asylum, the series you guys all know and love at this point. It is episode 5 already, and the team definitely got a lot of upgrades last episode. If you don't know how the upgrade system works, as always, it's going to be on the screen right now. Go ahead and pause it if you're new to the series. But this is the team that we have right now. So let's take a look at what happened last game. Behind the plate, Sean Murphy hit two bombs. He got himself upgraded. So we got the 90 overall. He has Monty Grandal. Nice little switch hitting catcher bat for us right there at first base Josh Bell also hit two solo bombs so we're going to Jason Giambi he had been on the team earlier and then he got downgraded I had to take him off so hopefully this time he can go off and uh not suck like he did the last time I used him at second base Ian Happ got himself a downgrade but as you guys know if you're at the lowest tier you can't get downgraded any further so we just replaced him with Adalberto Mondesi he was on the team episode Episode 1 and he got himself upgraded but he was at shortstop in that game so I decided he could go ahead and slide into a secondary position. Haley Ramirez is still going to be at shortstop. He's been there for I think like four games now. He always gets like one or two hits but never seems to get upgraded so hopefully that will change today. Adam Dunn still in left field. In center field Tory Hunter and same with Juan Soto. So that is the offense. The pitching staff did have a couple of upgrades. We had Casey Mott as our starting pitcher last game he got upgraded so we're going with the 93 Vita Blue and I mean is this even an option I mean Vita Blue is one of the most legendary pitchers in Kevin G.O.D. history so obviously he's going to be on the Kevin G.O.D. themed Eddie's Asylum series I can't wait till his turn of the rotation comes around and then also Mark Burley I slotted him in for, I think, Kenta Maeda. Yeah, uh, I slotted Mark Burley in for Kenta Maeda because we got an upgrade from winning the game, so I decided to use the upgrade for this. Mark Burley is a little bit low on energy because I used him for a debut a while back, but he did pitch really well in that debut. He actually didn't give up a single hit, I believe. He does throw really slow, so I don't know how he's going to do on some of the higher difficulties, especially since we're getting up towards Division Series pretty consistently now. Uh, but hopefully he can get the job done when his turn comes in rotation and he has enough energy. And then last but not least, in the bullpen, we went to Sergio Romo. Uh, over Jason Azringhausen, who got upgraded. Romo was definitely a fan favorite last year, but I haven't faced or used him this year, and I haven't seen a lot of people use him either. So I don't know if he's still as glitchy as he was last year, but he does have five pitches, so hopefully he can shut the door when we have to call on him in this series. So that is the team also. Once again, before we get started with the game, I wanted to address a comment. We have a comment like this pretty much every time we do an Eddie's Asylum video, which is great. I love you guys commenting and giving me suggestions. It's really awesome to see. This comment is coming from Cray John. He says, if Eddie does something good, there should be a good thing. Like two plus homers, you plan rookie versus Sponge or Mr. O or me. And so I suggested, what about if Eddie gets six upgrade points? points then I can add an upgrade to the position of my choice kind of similar to like if we win a game and then Cray John said that is okay Spongebob said that is also okay so that is a rule we're going to implement if Eddie Matthews gets six upgrade points we will upgrade the position of our choice so another addition to add to the upgrade and downgrade rules hopefully it should help us get another couple upgrades if Eddie does go off that is everything I need to talk about let's go win a ball game all right, today we're going to be going up against the San Diego RD, Santiago RD. I'm not really too sure what this guy's team name is all about, but he definitely has a goaded team, including Prestige Juan Soto, so that's going to be pretty gross to face. He's got Yu Darvish on the mound, who I find particularly easy to hit his delivery, but also it is the finest. I don't know that I've faced the finest before, so this should be, this should be a fun matchup. We'll see if we can come out on top. Soto rips it perfect, perfect to second base. That's going to be a line out. Eddie, perfect, perfect up the middle. First hit of the game off. Darvish is a perfect, perfect from Eddie Matthews. 
Oh, man. Hanley is going to get a curveball and hit it hard, but on the ground. That's going to be a double play. Unfortunate, but he got a perfect, perfect line out to end the lasting, so I can't really complain. Randy going to fly it to the warning track in left field. He just missed a homer there. But another 1-2-3 inning for Blake Snell. Dunn to center field. That should be a base hit. Adam Dunn's on the board with two outs here. Ah, he's good at fastball right there. Darvish is going to strike me out, but we got another hit. Is Monty. That's going to be against the shift. I, well, I don't know if they were shifting. Oh, why, why didn't I preload a throw there? Lead off double for uh, Ismani. And Seeger is going to deposit a base hit into center field. That's going to be his first run of the ball game. He takes the lead. All right, Darvish going to bunt him over to second. Sacrifice works to perfection for him. Wow. Lux is going to go lefty, lefty, and that ball is going to be out of here. He's got a 3 nothing lead. Blake Snell has got to keep him scoreless the rest of the way if he wants to get himself upgraded. This, I mean, he was pitching well early on, but this inning has completely derailed him. Giambi! Oh, baby! We get one back immediately. Giambi with a no-doubt bomb. That's what Giambi does. That's what I was looking for the first time I had him on the team. Randy on the ground is short. Hanley, can he make a jump throw? He can, but it's not going to be in time. Two out single for a Rosarena. He's going. We got a good throw off, and he's... What? Mondesi slapped that tag down, man. Come on. I know it wasn't a perfect throw, but you can't be that lazy with a tag that you let him steal that base. Good change up in the dirt. Grandall's going to strike out. My Grandall is going to toss it on to first. So we keep him scoreless in the fourth. He hates Hanley on one and two. That is, I don't know if he missed his spot or that was intentional. It was a fastball up and in, but I can't believe he was trying to hit me on one, two. Soto, that's going to be a base hit the other way. We got two men on now. Nobody out. This is a big spot. Grandol pops it up, had a hittable pitch, and we just missed it. That's unfortunate, but we still got two outs to work with. Done. That's actually going to be up the middle. He's going to make a play. I don't know why I swung at that. That was so stupid. Oh, gosh. Looking at a fastball up in the zone, we got two runners on to start the inning, and we couldn't manufacture anything from it. It's definitely in my own fault. I missed a hittable pitch, and then I chased one that was terrible. And then I struck out at a pitch that was right down the middle. I can't. I have no one to blame but myself for that. Seager going to rip it on the ground. If they weren't shifting, he uh, would have been grounded out there, but instead, leadoff single. He's going to sacrifice Bunt yet again. He's going to get him to second base there, and uh, with one out runner in scoring position, not looking good here for Snow. Hornsby on the ground is short. Hanley's going to make the play. That is out number three. Five innings, three runs for Snell. His next inning is going to be big. Giambi, that's going to be a base hit. Jason Giambi with his fourth upgrade point of the game. He had a homer earlier, base hit now. That is an upgrade at first base. Monacy, come on, get in the corner ball. Get in the corner, that's going to get down off the wall. Double for Mondesi. Giambi goes to third. Two runners in scoring position now. Oh, no, 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 no. Eddie got a good fastball to hit. And I just popped it up on the infield. Oh, that's so tragic. Hanley on the ground to short. Yep. Back-to-back -back innings where we had two runners on and we couldn't score him. We can't be squandering these scoring opportunities. Oh, gosh. That curveball hung and he's going to go deep on it. And we lose the potential for an upgrade with Snell. He allows his fourth run of the ball game, so he can't get an upgrade. Oh, wow. That's a good curveball, and he's going to strike me out there. Oh, Chapman. Come on, man. Bro, Chapman, you got to locate, buddy. You got to locate. And he's going to rip it to the gap. Oh, my gosh. I hung a fastball down the middle. What, what do I expect? Come on. Hose him at third. Get him at second.
All right, we're going to get him out there. He only scores one run, so Chapman can't get upgraded, but we prevent him from scoring any more. Giambi, get down. I think that's going to get down. It's going to get past him. He dives for it, and it's unsuccessful. Giambi with another extra base hit. He's popping off today. Oh, he throws the slider, and I'm just on the wrong side. I mean, it wasn't a good swing either. And then he walks in there. Stealing on 3-2. We get a... Oh, Giambi, you got to make a play on that. Oh, cut. what is happening? That's unacceptable. That is unacceptable, Soto. Just pick up the ball. What is that? Oh, and then he plunks him in the back. Yeah, right. Come on. Ground ball. Giambi, you going to make a play here? Wait. He, he's got two runners at third. Take him! What? What? There's no chance! That's so ridiculous! So Giambi throws the ball. He steps on the back, and he throws the ball to Hanley here. Hanley doesn't realize that it's a tag play, but he literally tags him out right here. Right here, he's tagging him with the glove. I mean, I guess he's taking it out of the glove, but that's just so stupid because it's a tag play, and Hanley's apparently too blind to realize it. But there, he's done. He should be done. And then Hanley just throws it home because I didn't realize he's got two runners at third there. I throw it to third here, and he tags him out, but Correa leaves right when I tag him out, which I guess... But... When you got two runners on the base, one should be out when they tag him out. And then Eddie throws it home. I guess I didn't throw it home in time. But oh my gosh, that's so terrible. That is such terrible baseball. Eddie, get through there. That's going to be through base hit. He dove with both of his players. I feel like he maybe had a play on that with Lux, but he probably wouldn't have gotten him if he got to that ball. Grandal, perfect, perfect. That's gonna be in the gap, and that is gone. Yes, Monty Grandal with a two-run bomb. Got to the fastball well above the zone, and we're gonna drive it out of here, and that should be an upgrade at the catcher position. Morris beyond the ground at first. Giambi cannot make a play yet again. The defense at first base is pretty pathetic. He's gonna go for three on this. What is he doing? And he's going to He's gonna make it back. I waited too long to throw it with Ramo. Good slider inside. So the double and the rundown uh, error on the execution of the rundown is not gonna come back to bite us. Squirrel is hitting for Ramo, so he gets an upgrade. Hunter to center field. He's gonna fly out there. It's the first time he's even put the ball in play. Now, it wasn't a half bad swing. We we have yet to find a center fielder that's capable of doing anything. I mean, we had Byron Buxton. He couldn't do anything. We had Christian Pache, who couldn't do anything. And now we got Tory Hunter. He's been completely useless. Oh, swing the bat, man. That was a pretty lackluster bottom of the ninth. We didn't get anything going there, so it's going to be, unfortunately, a loss 7-3. to three. So taking a look at the upgrades and downgrades that we're going to have to have for next game, we have Adam Dunn, who got one base hit, so he's staying on the team. Tory Hunter had a terrible game. I think there's a curse in center field, honestly. As I was saying earlier, nobody in center field can seem to get the job done, so we'll have to go looking for another center fielder. Juan Soto had a hit. He's staying on the team. Giambi had three hits, including two extra base hits, so he's definitely getting upgraded. Yes, Monte Grandal had a two-run bomb, so he's getting himself an upgrade. Mondesi, he got a double, which is two upgrade points, so he's staying on the team, and Hanley went over. So after four games with the team, he's going to have to be downgraded, so that is a little bit unfortunate. Then in the pitching staff, Blake Snell is staying on the team through six innings, allowed four runs, so just barely missed an upgrade. Chapman is staying on the team. He allowed one run. Franco allowed two runs, so he's staying.
and Ramo is getting an upgrade, so we will have our second 93 to 95 overall relief pitcher. So overall from today, we had three upgrades and one downgrade. So again, a positive game for the team. Uh, we have not really had a negative game for the team so far, which is, I mean, it's it's good that everybody's showing up to the field and uh, helping this team to get better, but it wasn't as big of a game as we would have liked, so definitely hoping to come out next week and swing a hotter bat and definitely pitch a little bit better. Better. So that's going to wrap up this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next week.